G'day cheeky dogs, my name's Margie and I'm an Australian currently living in America. And today we're going to be breaking down the Bluey Season 1 episode, Markets. This episode of Bluey is called Markets. I'm going to be showing you all of the hidden details, movie references, easter eggs, and talking about some of the theories to do with some of the characters in this episode. We're going to be talking about why the Pony Lady was so mean to Bluey and Indy, as well as what is going on with Indy's very restrictive diet, the ongoing $5 easter egg that we see continuing through season 1 and season 2, and of course the infamous deleted scene. <laughs> But first, I really want to talk about the location in this episode because, not surprisingly, it is based in Brisbane, Australia, where Bluey and Ludo Studios is as well. This episode takes place at the West End Markets in Davies Park, just across the river from where Bluey actually technically lives. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, please go and check out Bluey locations over on Instagram. They do fantastic side-by-side -side pictures and this location was no different either. They show the German sausage stall that's at the market there, as well as like the buskers that are there as well. And of course, just on Google Maps, we can see some other great images of like the fruit shop and the juice stall that are also there too. I also love the fact that in this episode they showed like a takoyaki stall as well and in real life there's like an okonomiyaki stall which are Japanese food and that's very like reflective of West End. It's a very multicultural area so I love that they added in those details as well. Carrot juice please. The other kind of cool location is the South Bank Sky Needle. So at the very end scene where everyone's flossing and listening to the busker, you can see the Sky Needle in the background and this is what it looks like in real life. Of course, we do have some traditional Easter eggs in this as well. We have a long dog and pineapples. So the long dog is in the pony lady scene. When you zoom in on the background, you can see a purple cushion there and in that purple cushion is a purple long dog, very well camouflaged. The pineapples, of course, not surprisingly, appear at the juice stall and at the fruit and vegetable market stall as well. Now, I want to break down the rest of the stuff kind of based on like the characters in this, like the children and the adults and all the background characters because there's just so many and like lots of fun little details with each one. So I'm going to start off with the children first and in particular with Gruber. Now, in the subtitles, it says Rupert, but that's actually wrong. Ludo Studios did confirm that his name is Gruber, which is a diehard movie reference. The villain in Die Hard is called Hans Gruber, who is a German. When Gruber, of course, is a German shepherd, and him and his dad are selling German sausages. So it's a nice, like, full circle kind of moment for Easter eggs. German sausage! German sausage! The next character I want to talk about is Buddy. And why was he so scared at the busker? And I think it's all to do with, like, the busker's terminology. When he says thanks to Bluey and Indy, he calls them matey. Thanks, matey! That deserves another song! But when he says thanks to Buddy, he says this. Ah, thanks, Buddy! <laughs> So obviously Buddy was just freaked out because he feels like the busker knew his actual name when he has no idea who he is. The next character, of course, is the Rusty lookalike that we see in the opening scene. We just see the back of him and it quite obviously is Rusty's character, but they've just changed the color scheme on him to make him more orange. So maybe he's like Rusty's cousin from somewhere. Now I'm going to talk about Bluey and Indy specifically at the end of these characters because I feel like it ties in a bit better there. So let's talk about some of the adult background characters that we see in this. But before I go into that, a coffee break, specifically and Atlas Coffee Club sponsored break. Now, as many of you know, I myself am also a chili to two little kids, and basically every night is an episode of sleepy time for us. Ah! Oh, bluey. Which means that I tend to look like this, or this, every morning. 99 bottles a day which is why coffee is a very integral part of my life. And just like my family's Bluey collection here, our coffee collection is also a big part of our house. Also, let me know if you can spot the long dog in Chattermax in this. Not only have Atlas Coffee Club sponsored this video, but they are offering you cheeky dogs 50% off your first bag of coffee using my code AussieGirlMargy. Not only is their coffee amazing, but it comes beautifully packaged and with a postcard from the country that it is sourced from. It also gives you details about the tasting notes, roast level, the coffee's history, and the coffee notes that make it it's so unique. And as someone who also grew up on a farm, I love that they give you details about the coffee farm that it came from. Atlas Coffee Club also pay above fair trade prices for all of their coffee, helping to sustain local farming practices, which I love. So if you love coffee as much as I love drinking coffee and watching Bluey, you can click on the link below in the description box or in the pinned comment below as well and get 50% off your first bag using my code AussieGirlMargie. Okay, back to the video. Wow. 
<laughs> okay, so the first one that we see is the surfer chick from the future episode Beach. She's selling honey here at the stall. We then also see the checkout chick from the episode Kids, as well as the checkout chick from the episode Hammer Barn. We can also see the postie from the episode Dance Mode having a little date maybe with the checkout chick from Hammer Barn. We see Rocco, who we've seen in multiple other episodes before at the bubble shop. And of course we see Mrs. Retriever, who is Bingo's teacher as well. And she looks like she's like doing reflexology or Reiki, just based off like the chart that's in the background that looks like it's like a pressure points kind of chart. And I do wonder like if this is just her hobby or if this is something she's doing to earn extra income because yeah, teachers don't make a lot of money. We then also have Honey's mom and she is voiced by Sam Moore, who's one of the producers at Ludo Studios for Bluey. I'll have that one, thank you. We also see Pat in the background looking very worried. He's trying to pick out like a bracelet or a necklace perhaps for Janelle, I think. And he's just really worried about which one he's picking out. We also see Winton's dad and hear Winton's dad for the first and only time in this episode. I've got one toffee apple left. Now he is referred to as the Toffee Apple Dog, but of course in future episodes and in the Behind Bluey podcast, we find out that his name is actually Cornelius. And he is voiced by Jake Bresanello, who used to be the show's designer, and he's actually from South Australia. And for those of you who don't know, South Australians usually have the cultivated Australian accident, mm, accident? accent, which usually means that they sound a little bit more British. Sweetheart, can you go get your dad a German sausage, please? Okay, dad. So I think Jake Bresanello definitely has this accent maybe naturally, but just put on more of a British accent because Cornelius, of course, is a British or English bulldog. So I love that they kind of tie that in. And then, of course, he does say the iconic lovely jubbly line. Lovely jubbly. Which we find out in future episodes is also the number plate for his car. We also see Gruber's dad for the first time. And of course, he is a German shepherd dog. And he is also voiced by Joe Brum, the creator of Bluey. Gruber, go get me a carrot juice. The juice dog is Juniper's mum. And she is also voiced by Liana Wright, who is a graphic designer for Bluey. Oh, we're out of carrots. Can you get me a bag of carrots, please, Juniper? We have the Poffergees dog, who is voiced by Daley Pearson, the co-founder and producer for Bluey. Poffergees! Poffergees? And yes, I'm aware that Poffergees is not apparently how you pronounce the little Dutch pancakes. I didn't know that at all until someone had mentioned it in my comments and also like the countless times on Reddit threads that people have said like this is not how you pronounce it. So, apologies. Poffergees! Oh, we also, of course, have our busker dog, and he's probably one of my favorite designs of Bluey characters because he looks so much like his real life counterpart, which is Joff Bush, the head of music at Bluey. Everything just from like the shaggy hair to the exact same glasses as Joff, I think is just such fantastic little details. Who likes to dance? Woo! And of course, the busker reappears in multiple other episodes, and he also reappears with the $5 note with the little tooth fairy sticker on it. We see it again in the episode Quiet Game, where he's using it to pay for ice cream and of course it's come back around to him again by the episode dance mode where we see it in his little busker's hat so i love that it's sort of really just highlighting the whole idea from the end of this episode of like what goes around comes around Look, boy. <gasps> Before we go into more characters though, let's talk about the money and in particular that $5 note. Of course, it replicates the Australian $5 note with Queen Elizabeth on the front and she is represented by a corgi and we know that Queen Elizabeth loved corgis so it's such a cute little detail that they added that in. We also see the $10 note which replicates Banjo Patterson on the front there as possibly a dingo from the look of the design and instead of a horse, there's a little dog there as well so it's just the dogified version of our Aussie money. Now, let's go back to the characters and talk about the pony lady and what was going on with her. Pony First, in case you didn't know, the pony lady is a real life person. I love that they added this in. She's usually at the Barden markets, not the West End markets, but she looks so much like her dogified character. Everything from the hat to the fanny pack and the fact that she gives out horse, donkey and pony rides as well at markets. So I think that's just like a cool little detail that they've added her into the Bluey universe. In the show as well, she is voiced by Meg O'Connell, who's one of the development managers for Bluey at Ludo Studios. Okay, Indy, you can sit in front. Oh, I'm sorry, honey, but you don't have enough money for two riders. But of course, we should talk about the fact that she refuses to let Bluey and Indy ride on the horse. And I think it's kind of obvious really as to why she doesn't, because it would just completely undermine the entire lesson of this episode. And that's the idea that money can buy you only a certain amount of goods and services. So you have to be conscious of how you spend it. 
pony lady, she needs to earn money as well. She has to pay for the horses, she has to pay for the stall, pay for the trailer, pay for the fuel, pay for food. So yeah, she can't just be giving out things for free. Otherwise, like what's the point of learning how to be conscious of your money and financial responsibility with it? It's really supposed to teach Bluey that she has to understand what her money can be used for. And she does make a really good decision and decides not to do that because she can't obviously share it with Indy. Hmm, I think I've changed my mind. Well, aren't you a good friend? I also think it's a bit of like a health and safety thing as well because two dogs on a tiny little pony probably wouldn't be the best idea. Okay, Indy, you can sit in front. Now, let's talk about those ponies. One of them is called Biscuits, which is a great Aussie reference. We don't say cookies in Australia, we say biscuits, so I love that that's her name. And then of course there is Buttermilk, who is part of the infamous deleted scene. Goodbye, Buttermilk. You're so beautiful. <laughs> So this scene exists in Australia, the UK, and apparently on Disney Junior sometimes as well, but it's not on Disney Plus. And I think it's really interesting because usually like poop jokes are something that like little kids find really funny. And that's like the whole idea of the censorship on Disney Plus is that it's for little kids. So I don't really understand why they took it out because it's not like they're showing like them playing in it or anything like that. Because even later on in the episode, they say it's disgusting. That was disgusting. Yeah. So if anything, I feel like it's teaching them like, yeah, this is what you should do. You shouldn't go near it. You should maybe run away from it. So I don't understand the censorship of this. They also did it again in the muffin part of Pass the Parcel at her birthday party. In the Australian version, you see the poop on the ground, but in the American version, you don't. So cheeky dogs, let me know in the comment section down below. What do you think about this deleted scene? And do you think that they should have just kept it in on Disney Plus or that they should have deleted it? Okay, let's talk now about Indy's mum. And in case you didn't notice or didn't hear, her voice has been used before in Bluey. Indy. Yes, mum. Hey, sweetie. Go and pop this in the guitar case for me. She is voiced by Mike Warhurst, who is also the voice of Aunt Trixie. But unlike Aunt Trixie, Indy's mum is definitely depicted as like a crunchy granola mum and very much a hippie. And we can especially see that just from the peace sign on the stall, as well as like her clothing and attire with the crystals and the dream catches as well. We also find out in later episodes that she is vegan because she makes the vegan nut roast for Bandit and Bluey in the episode family meeting. But she of course has imposed really strict dietary restrictions onto Indy. But I'm I'm not allowed that. Why not? Mum says it's got added ingredients. Can you have barbecue sauce? I'm not allowed that one either. Mustard? I'm definitely not allowed mustard. Well and it doesn't seem that they're because of allergies for any reason because in the episode handstand it doesn't look like they've cooked anything like allergy free and Indy looks super excited about the duck cake. So I do think that it's just generalized restrictions that her mum has put on her and something that's really interesting is that Indy and her mum are Afghan hounds and in real life Afghan hounds actually have pretty strict diets because they have really like sensitive stomachs and can have a lot of gastric issues. So I do wonder if they wanted to add in like this aspect of their dog personalities into the show and I love that maybe that's what they did. Have these got any wheat, sugar, gluten or dairy in them? That's all they've got in them. Now, in terms of like Bluey's response to Indy's restrictions, I think again that this is like a mini lesson within the big lesson of this episode. And that's the fact that Bluey just accepts it as it is. She doesn't make a joke about them. She doesn't try to force or peer pressure Indy into eating the sauces, the puffages, or even like the toffee apple. I'm not sure I like this toffee apple. Plus, Indy can't have it. Oh, that's no good. She just accepts that, okay, that's what Indy can't eat. Let's work around it, which I think is fantastic and such a good lesson. Kids these days have a lot more allergies than they used to and a lot more restrictions as well. And I think this is a really great lesson to show that kids can just accept these restrictions as well with their friends without having to peer pressure, bully or joke about them. So I do like that this is like a little mini lesson for kids. What are you going to spend it on? I don't know. Can you come and help me? Yeah. Now, of course, the overall lesson is about financial responsibility. Can I get my five bucks back? That's not really how it works, kiddo. Once you've spent money, it's, well, gone. And especially being conscious about how you spend your money and what you can get for your money, but also, of course, how money works and how it can go around and eventually come back to you through different goods and services. Dad, I'm not sure I made the right choice. I think I want to put my five bucks in that case and get a song. Oh, 
Right. And I love that they show this idea of like how the world, or technically how the economy works in a really child friendly way. Now, before I give my reading, I do want to bring up a few of the other little extra hidden details that maybe you might have missed. Could that be five bucks? <laughs> In the intro scene, we see a carrot toy on the ground, who I definitely think is a reference to Mr. Carrot from the movie Bolt. We see Chili drinking from a mug that has a big B on it, which I think of course is B for Bandit. Bluey also in the intro has no missing teeth, even though she has lost a tooth for the Tooth Fairy. So either it's just taken her a really long time to put it under her pillow, which I don't think really makes sense. But in the very end scene, of course, when she loses a tooth again, we see her animated with a missing tooth. So I feel like not technically an animation error, but it just would have been harder for them to create a whole new set of like animation with Louie missing a tooth the entire episode. And of course there is the flossing, which very much makes this episode dated to 2018, which is like five? six years ago? Oh my gosh, Bluey's been out for a long time. But of course we see it at the start and at the end of the episode as their way of showing that they are like really, really happy. And I think it's just like a fun animation thing, which of course comes back in, in the future episode, Grannies, where it is very important. So for me, overall, I would give this episode probably four out of five long dogs. I love the lesson about how the economy works as well as accepting limitations that our friends might have with their diets. And of course, all the cool little Easter eggs and the background details with all the different characters I thought was really, really cool. But cheeky dogs, let me know in that comment section down below what rating would you give this out of five long dogs and what was your favorite easter egg as well also don't forget that if you love coffee as much as i do you can click on my link down below for atlas coffee club and get 50 percent off your first bag of coffee using my code aussie girl margie but until i release another video i have picked you cheeky dogs out a few other videos that maybe you would like to watch and i will see you all in another video Mwah. bye